How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. I want to give you a little update video or maybe just introduce you to the first time a project where I kind of completely redid my deck. When I purchased my house three years ago, it had a huge deck that was about 340 square foot, but it was really beat up. So through a course of three different videos, I tore off the existing decking, tore off some planter boxes, tore off some stairs, tore off the seating, and got back to the structure of the deck. And then in the second video, I actually secured up that structure, changed out some of those joists, changed out the rim joists, and actually put one support post in and did a little bit of concrete work. Then in the last video, I went through with the camo fastening system and I laid down new pressure treated deck boards. Now there's some other adjacent videos like laying down a landing pad for some stairs and also building stringers and a staircase to this deck. All those go into this deck and it's been about two years since that project's finished. Now this project at the time cost me about $2,300 and today in 2022, May 2022, the material cost would be much higher, at least two times, probably more like three times the cost. So even if you're doing it yourself, a deck of this size, 340 square foot, probably going to be in the 5000 to 6000 range for just material cost. But since I am a complete DIYer when it comes to decking, I think it is good to show after a few years how does this thing look. Is it still looking okay? Is it holding up? And maybe a few of those lessons learned. Just in case you're going to take on this project yourself, you can take all those videos as reference and then also hopefully learn for a few things that I would do differently now. So here's the deck and actually one thing I did today is I cut the end boards again because they were shrinking up quite a bit over the first two years. Now that along the length is at least surprising. It's not that surprising. You can see the gaps here. The gaps have formed and gaps will vary, let's say from three eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And all these boards were set with zero gaps when I first installed them. I installed these using the camo fastening system. So you just put that right on your joist. Then you take your screws and you drop them in the two holes. And then you take your impact driver and sink both those. And then that is going to conceal your fasteners. You can see the little fastener holes here. It works really well. It's held the boards down except for this one guy. This guy has really curled up a bit over the years and it's been where I had to drill, countersink, and then set four deck screws to really try to hold it down. Other than that, everything's behaved fairly well. And one of the embarrassing things, which you might have already noticed, is I, in two years, have still not sealed the deck. So that will be done and I'll at least post a picture on the community tab proving I finally sealed it. Also, you might notice there's no seams. These were 24 foot long boards. They were huge. So when you get boards of that length, you're gonna have imperfections because they deliver them to your house and you're only gonna get so many extras. So I tried filling in some of the knots and some of the defects in these boards with some Bondo wood filler. It worked okay, but I think once I seal the deck, those are really going to stand out and not really look that great. One other error when I was adding up all those boards is it left me where I didn't have an overhang on the end of my deck. Zero overhang, which is definitely not ideal. Now a project that I have coming up this week is actually to add a railing. So we'll do a railing on this side, obviously opening for the stairs, railing all the way around this edge, and then leaving the stairs that run the length here wide open. So since the project, this has been another addition. We put in a concrete patio, tore out all those bricks, which were the old patio there. And just for your reference, this patio is about 30 foot long, 
at about 14 foot wide and it cost me about five grand uh, to put in last year. I did not do it, that was hired out. So just in case that's something you guys are looking to do. So overall, two years later, especially since I have not put down the Thompson water sealer, I mean, the deck's holding up pretty good. I need to get the water sealer on or the boards will, will really start to deteriorate and probably have already kind of impacted their life. The little concrete pad that I poured and made a video of, this was my complete amateur job pouring concrete. It has held up well. Uh, you can tell br the brush finish uh, is not quite professional grade, uh, but we will be doing landscaping this week. So mulch going all the way around this and starting to get the backyard all together. So what would I do differently, let's say, on my next attempt? Uh, I take a little bit more time calculating out how many boards I'll need to make sure I have that overhang. I should have ripped a board down in half at the start, so then I would have the board width I needed to get it secured to the structure of the deck, but then have that nice one inch overhang. I'm not sure the decision of 24 foot boards, which I obviously had to have delivered. So I only had so many extra boards, which I could choose from. So that meant some of the boards that I was putting down had larger knots and larger defects than I would really want to put down on the deck. So if I would have went with more like a 12 foot board and kind of managed to those seams, I probably would have had a little better selection and a little better wood going on the surface. I definitely should have sealed the deck within about one or two months of putting down the deck boards and sealed every year since. So I've actually missed two cycles now and it's well overdue. So it's well overdue for a nice cleaning with a pressure washer and a coat of Thompson's water seal. One thing I will say with all the movement and shrinkage of the boards, the camo fastening system, so these screws and then that handle that you put down where it's helping you drive at the right angle through the boards to really conceal the fasteners, that was a very good decision. And that's held up really, really well, especially for all that movement and shrinkage in the boards. It's held the vast majority of those boards down really well. And I think the fastening system is kind of passed with flying colors. You will see the fasteners that I used and also all the links to these different videos we talked about down below the video in the description for your reference. But let me know if you guys have any questions, especially if this is a project coming up for you and you just wanna make sure you got everything planned out right. Be happy to jump down in the comments and give at least my two cents to help you along with your project. But if you wanna kinda of start off and follow along with a specific deck project, check out this video right here and we'll start off with the tear off so you can see the original condition that I was working with. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.